From the Sonia Show, JetJurgens.com, and Assignment X. In a world where Wall Street titans rule the economy, at a time when small town America teeters on the edge, just one calculated repair woman stands before us in an economic apocalypse. Sonia Mansfield. If I'm adding this right, two plus two equals annihilation. Christopher Allen Smith. Greed for lack of a better term, is good. Wait, no, scratch that, kittens. It's kittens that are good. Peter Brown. If I had a dime for every time I kiss a girl, I'd have one dime. It almost never happens. And Kermit the Frog as Wall Street hatchet man, Brett Gecko. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Piggy. I'm going to fire you. Piggy, you are fired. You are fired, Piggy. You are fired. Fired. This is Dorking Out About Trailers. Welcome to episode four of Dorking Out About Trailers, a podcast about previews, trailers, teasers, and the movies that they promise us. With me today is my co-host, professional author and writer of The Sonya Show, Sonya Mansfield. And with me today is my co-host, Emmy Award-winning filmmaker and nerd author, Christopher Allen Smith. And with both of us today is Peter Brown, associate, is our other co-host, Peter Brown, associate editor of Assignment X. Peter, what trailers are we talking about on the show today? Well, in this podcast, we're going to be talking about a little indie movie. You might have heard of it. It's called The Last Jedi, talking Thor Ragnarok. Baby Driver, Atomic Blonde, The Bad Batch, The Hitman's Bodyguard, and The Mummy. Ooh. So before we begin, that's a lot of trailers. It, it is. is. It's important that everyone knows this is a watch-along podcast. So in our show notes, we've got links to all these trailers. And when you hear this sound, you can go watch them and come back for our wise insights. First... Since we started doing the Dorking Out show, we did a bunch of special bulletins and we were giving predictions on the Rotten Tomatoes scores for the movies that we previewed. Well, a bunch more movies have come out. And so now we can take a look at who's ahead in the Rotten Tomatoes prediction race. So for those of you listening for the first time, here's how the game works. We watch the previews, give our scores, and whoever gets the closest wins. It's like, it's like golf, so I'm told the person with the lowest score wins, or that's the way we did it last time. This week, we're doing an average of the six movies that have come out since our last episode, and an average of the scores that we gave to those movies. So, Peter Brown, last time, you were far, far, far ahead of Sonia and I. That's Sonya, right. Sonia was far ahead of me, and I was... Just far, far behind. Now, however, in a dramatic turnaround, Peter Brown, you are still far ahead of us. Damn you know, right. The average actual score, the average scores for the six movies since we last did an episode: Colossal, Wilson, Chips, Power Rangers, Aftermath, and the Belko Experiment was forty-four point six six. Peter Brown. Your average score was 56.83. But now look what's happening in the back of the pack. Sonia's average score was 63.83. And my average score was 64.33. I am one and a half points behind Sonia after being 20 points behind earlier. Math is not my thing, but even <laughs> I know that you have totally rigged this to make yes, it look like you are totally doing that. First off, all right. First off, this is not how you did the first time. This is not how we did it the first time. We took the the, the average difference between the Rotten Tomato score, and then we averaged them out based on how many movies there were, mm -hmm. not just based on the total scores. So you're rigging it to so that you sound better. 
Like you're a better reviewer than the rest of us. Well, I have something to admit. I did not prepare for this show as I probably should have. <laughs> so I threw this together at the last minute, not remembering the method of scoring that we did last time. Because what we usually do is we figure out how far off each person is from the actual score, and then we total that up so it's an average of how far off they are. Uh, <laughs> and it's a it, nice try. Exactly. Yeah, and, nice try trying to, you know, make yourself look better. So the point is... <laughs> <laughs> on the next episode, we're going to have everything corrected, and we might even have a running total. We're, we'll, we'll put a bo- blog post up on the Dorking Out Show, uh, dorkingoutshow.com, which will have all the movies that we've rated, how far off we are, etc., etc. But we're not going to do that now, because we have a boatload of trailers to trailers. get, to get trailers. To. that's what we're doing on the show trailers that's right trailers <laughs> trailers so the what show am i on again exactly the <laughs> trailer that we're gonna do today right now we're gonna start off with a big one now here's the actually we should talk about this guys because here's the thing up until now we've usually reviewed the first trailer that comes out for a movie for example we rated the teaser or the teaser trailer that came out for justice league back in august so we've already reviewed justice league and given our score predictions like a year and a half before the movie even came out we've already done uh spider-man we've already done a lot of movies now we are going to be rating and watching star wars the last jedi uh but this is just a teaser are we? Is this really going to be the only thing we say on the show about Star Wars for the rest of the year? Hmm. That doesn't maybe, seem right. It doesn't seem right. You're right. So maybe we should update it. Like, okay, I originally thought this was going to be this amount, this score. Now I think it's going to be this score. Okay. I think I think that's fair. All right. So we can. I'll sign off on that. So we can amend our predictions with every new trailer that comes out now we're not necessarily going to be uh redoing our uh uh we're not going to be necessarily re you know like review we're not going to review every transformers trailer that comes out or every star God. wars trailer that comes out but i, I think even though good. chris would love to review every he would he no, would love I to wouldn't. talk about the transformers any reason to talk about his favorite uh. movie <laughs> franchise all right all right, so with all of that being babbled, let's now take a look at Star Wars The Last Jedi. Holy smokes! Sonya Mansfield, yeah. would, you, would you like to begin with your thoughts on Star Wars The Last Jedi? I am very excited. We've talked about this before, about... Uh, I used to get really excited around December just because I love the holiday season. But now I'm really excited because we're going to get a new Star Wars movie every (laughs) December. So I'm really excited. The end makes me feel a little worried, though, of this trailer where he says it's time for the Jedi to end. What does that mean? That means the Jedis and the Skywalker family have not been fantastic for the galaxy. (laughs) And maybe maybe we should pack it in because, uh, damn. I well, I just worry. Really Does that mean Luke's the one that's going around, like, trying to kill Jedi and stuff? Ooh, I didn't even think yeah. of that. Yeah, I didn't think about that either. I kind of doubt it. However. I hope not. Uh, I wouldn't like that. Maybe that's why he went into exile. I, 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 I suspected <laughs> it's some sort of Kylo Ren murdered all the kids at his Jedi Academy Luke had a hard think about it and said, you know what? Maybe the Jedi's just need to lay down and that's it. Maybe we're done, you know, because. Well, yeah, they haven't had the best uh, history. Exactly. I mean, they they keep coughing up and they keep getting cut down. So maybe it's time for there to be no more Jedi, dark or light. Right. That could be. Now, Now, I will also say that. So since the the Force Awakens came out and then Rogue One came out and in those trailers 
and even specifically even more so in, in the Rogue One, there was a lot of footage and a lot of dialogue that were in those trailers that ended up not even being in either movie, right? So there was, in, in the Force Awakens trailers, there's a whole bunch of talk about, you know, reaching out to the Force and all that. None of that was in the movie. And in the Rogue One, there was all kinds of scenes and everything, and there, there wasn't in the movie. So I've kind of kind of come to the conclusion that these trailers are fun to watch. They're, they're you know, you get kind of a, I guess, a Jedi boner or nerd boner, whatever, <laughs> from them. But, like, until, like, the movie comes out, like, I'm not kind of going to be taking anything that I hear or see as as gospel, I guess. So, you know, those lines may not even be in that movie that that, that he says or that whoever says. I, I'm not hearing yeah. about lots of reshoots for this movie, though, like I was hearing about for Rogue One. Plus, I, I think that's very interesting. I think you're probably right, Peter. However, if they were, if this movie were to come out and Luke was not to say that line, which was like the the biggest "Holy smokes, look at that" line of the whole trailer, the one that kind of the clincher at the end, I would be that would be kind of spectacular. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but you know, I mean, I just I, I think about the Force Awakens and I think about all those lines about her reaching out to the force and all you have to do is let it in and all this stuff and none of that was in in the movie so i don't know that's right of course you know one one thing that i kind of enjoy and maybe this is the way that they should do trailers is confuse the audience or kind of not bs the audience (laughs) But just like, look, we're not we're not going to ruin the movie for you. That was one thing that The Force Awakens did and that I think uh, Rogue One did is they got you very excited for the movie, but they didn't ruin it and they didn't tell you everything that was going to happen, um, unlike a lot of modern movie trailers. So maybe yeah, that's the right. way to do it. Maybe show some spectacular stuff that's in there, throw a couple lines of dialogue that might be in there but might not and might de- deflect you in a wrong way. But still, don't leave you feeling cheated once you've gone to see the movie. Maybe that's the way you yeah. do it. Lie to people to get them to watch your movie. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that's making me nervous about our podcast is when Force before Force Awakens was coming out, I didn't watch any of the trailers. I think mm. I watched like that very first like teaser trailer, and then I was like, "That's cool. I'm not watching anymore." Mm-hmm. And. I like doing that. I watched all the Rogue One previews. I kind of think I would like to go into The Last Jedi not having seen all of the trailers. Well, it's too bad that you're on the show then, huh? I know. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's funny you should What I might that. do, though, is I might not watch them and then I'll just come on the show and lie and pretend like I have. <laughs> well, if there's anything that our audience has already come to know and expect... It's is that the, I am a liar. Not just you, but the entire Mansfield family. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it, it's, they it, would be offended if they listened to this if podcast. If they even knew what podcasting technology was. No. All right. <laughs> that's uncalled for. And Mr. Mr. Mansfield, I am sorry. All right. So, but I do want to say one thing, kind of not tongue in cheek, is that I did see a posting on Reddit this week about a guy who had just sworn off all uh, trailers. Might have been a woman. I'm sorry. I just I just kind of read read the top top couple lines, and they said that their their movie going experience. I think they had been doing this for a year, year and a half, had in, improved quite a bit. Oh yeah, I by, bet by yeah, I not having any idea. And I know when I when I think of back when I was a critic and going to see press screening and stuff, I would sometimes go see movies having seen nothing. And one of them being uh, the Sixth Sense. And I remember just walking out of that movie, just like holy smokes, this was this was amazing. No hints, no nothing. So maybe maybe what we should do is close this podcast down. And not watch trailers ever again. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. All right, Peter. I, I have often oh. said that I think that's why I always like foreign movies so much because I never see trailers for foreign movies. Hmm. Like you just read like a little blurb about them, you know, and you're like, that sounds good. Maybe I'll watch it. And then I watch it and I always love them and they always. 
they they surprise me and go in directions I wasn't expecting because I never see a trailer for them. Hmm. All right. Wow, hmm. you you really talked me into it. All right, kids. <laughs> the show the Dorking Out About Her Trailers up. has been canceled. You're welcome, everybody. You're welcome. <laughs> Sonia has destroyed the podcast. There's a few people out there being like, so yes. we just used the Last Jedi as a reason to. That's right. Star talk Wars about destroyed. trailers, but not really talk about the trailer. That's I'm right. very <laughs> excited for the Last Jedi. I think there's. I'm excited to see it when it comes out. Now that I think about it, is this podcast another thing that the Skywalker family has destroyed? <laughs> awesome. Uh, see how the rest of this podcast goes. That's so, right. Oh, we'll make the uh, Sony Mansfield, uh, what are you going to give the Last Jedi? What is your prediction? Ninety. Ninety. All right, Peter, what is your prediction? Well, because of the scary red font, I think I'm going to go with uh, a little higher than what the Force Awakens got. 95. 95. I am going to be a, to a, a total coward, but B, this, I think I'm getting a little lucky here because I was already going to go into the mid-90s. I'm going to go 94. What I'm going to do is mirror <laughs> my scores very closely with Peter Brown's because he's so, so good at this oh, the game. the cheating continues. It's not the cheating. It is not is cheating. Right me. It's, it, that's right. It's not cheating if it's a legitimate strategy. <laughs> it's game theory, Sonia. Look it up. I got to do something. I'm so far behind. I got to make up. I got to make up some time. Okay. All right. That brings us to. It would not be a dorking out podcast if we didn't mention some aspect of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and that means now we are going to review the first trailer for Thor Ragnarok. All right, so that was Guardians of the Galaxy 3, <laughs> starring Thor and the Hulk. Uh, Peter Brown. Yeah. What are, your, what, are your, what are your feelings on the Marvel Universe overall and where we're at with this movie now? Um, oh, gosh. Wow, I wasn't expecting that question. Um. You know, uh, I I have some issues with um, some of the other movies that may be coming out, specifically the Spider-Man movie. Um, I am a little concerned about that movie. I have a feeling maybe it's not going to live up to expectations. Um, I uh, am excited about Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Um, it looks really fun and more going to be carrying on kind of where the other one left off. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 or Thor Ragnarok, uh, actually really uh, it seems like it could be a fun movie. Um, I think the whole Planet Hulk thing they got going on is cool. That was a, a, a string of comics where Hulk basically was abandoned on an alien planet, and he basically took it over and uh, eventually went mad and all this other stuff. But um, And, you know, apparently this movie's going to be a buddy kind of, comedy slash action with Thor and the Hulk, which is kind of interesting considering you know, they have all these this history with them being at odds with each other in the Avengers movies. Um, but, you know, I, th I, I like I think I like this one. I think it looks it looks good. I think Kate Blanchett looks amazing. Um, I didn't so, even yeah. recognize her. I, was I like, know. At first, I was like, who? Oh, like. Yeah, I wonder yes. if we're finally getting a really good villain in one of these movies, even though, you know, Marvel does get bad raps for not having fantastic villains. I think the last couple movies, I think there have been some pretty good... I thought Zemo from uh, Civil War was a fantastic villain. I agree. Uh, I agree. And the fact that he had no powers. Yeah, A, and the fact he had no powers. And B, and this has been pointed out elsewhere, he, he won. Mm, <laughs> his, indeed he did. His, his, plan, yep. his plan paid off. He destroyed the Avengers. So there's that. Um... But other than that, all right, so now we know where you're coming from. Uh, what what else do you think of this uh, trailer? Um, you know, it definitely, you, you, when you say Guardians of the Galaxy 3, it, it is definitely has that feel like they're trying to capture 
some of the, the, the lightning in a bottle that those movies definitely have. So I'm not exactly sure if they're going to be, if the, if the movie's going to pan out that way or if they're just trying to present it that way. But it um, uh, definitely kind of has more of a cosmic feel, which the other two Thor movies did not, which it probably needs because those other two movies were, you know, probably not the best in the Marvel Universe. That's for sure. Right. Sonia, what, yes. what, are, your, what are your opinions of the previous two Thor movies? I actually quite enjoyed the first one. Like, I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't even bother with the second one, though, because I thought it looked kind of lame. I think Hmm. this one looks really fun. Uh And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, It's directed by the same man who did What We Do in the Shadows and Hunt for the Wilder People, which I think is a really interesting choice. And... Something about this preview really reminded me of Flash Gordon. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I, I think can it, see that. I agree. I think it was that era of rock, and it was also the... I think Flash Gordon had very similar titles. This is I think so, very too. very 1980s video game, yeah. drop your quarter like, in, I really play like titles. this preview. Like, I think it's a really fun preview. I don't think it gives, like... A ton away, although I mean, I don't know if the Hulk stuff is a spoiler or not, but it makes me really excited to see it as someone who didn't even bother with the second one. Uh, It makes me think I should go back and watch the second one before I see this. And you don't have to. There's there's no reason to. Then I won't. Yay. Yeah, Yeah. I don't don't think it has any real uh, bearing on this movie at all. And I don't think, uh, beyond, I think it, it introduced another, another gemstone. I think maybe, I think that might be the only big thing in that movie. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, now that I know. think about it, you could pretty much go through as long as you watch the Avengers movies, you could, you could skip, you know, like you could skip, uh, Iron Man two, watch the Avengers, then watch Iron Man three. And then like, all right, I know where I'm at. That kind of thing. Well, and it's it looks like maybe this movie explains why Thor and Hulk weren't in Civil War. Uh, I think yes. it does. I think it yes. does that exactly. So uh, well, we know at the think? end, at the end of Avengers: Age of Ultron, Hulk left. Right? He was like, "I'm a danger to everybody," so he right. was just going to leave. But they didn't say where he went, or they, everybody assumed he was probably just going to stay on Earth. But obviously, he did not. He could have been kidnapped in a Peter Quill type fashion, and yep. whisked away from Earth. Uh, so yeah, no, I think this looks really good. I one of the things that I really like about Marvel, among the many, many, many things that I like about Marvel, is the fact that they're able to change direction and change what they're doing. They, they're, you know, for as much credit as they get for kind of planning these things out years and years in advance. You know, if they make a movie like Ant-Man that's a kind of a little heist movie rather than a big, huge, monstrous uh, superhero movie, if it takes off, they can, okay, we're going to do something with this now also. Or the same with Doctor Strange or whatever. And this is, I think, the correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think the Thor movies are thought of as kind of the least good Marvel movies. Um, even though I agree with you, Sonya, the first one, uh, I liked, and I actually liked the second one better than the first one, but I believe I am in the distinct minority there. Um, and and for them to, to think, all right, Thor's out in space, that's where he lives. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy has, has cre- started to sketch out this very nice kind of universe out there that we can play in. We may as well just have a lot of fun with it and start really doing, you know some crazy comic book stuff and take our heroes that we've only seen on earth out and you know maybe they never even come to earth i, I don't even know if they ever, ever even go to earth in this movie um, right so yeah no i think it i i'm very excited for it uh i'm excited for them to start using characters in different ways and splitting them off and rather than having to have all the avengers they can just use a couple characters or follow different threads like the thread of Thor and the Hulk maybe not being super fans of each other during the Avengers movies um mm-hmm. no I think this is I think this could be this could be cool I'm I'm very excited until until I see a truly awful 
train wreck Marvel movie. I think I am going to be excited for every single Marvel movie that's coming down the pike. You are such a fanboy. I I am a I am a total when it comes to the cinematic movie universe, I'm a complete Marvel zombie. I will admit it with pride. Uh, <laughs> Peter Brown. What yeah. Is, what is your score? I'm going to go uh, 75. 75. All right. Why 75? Um, well, I think the other two Thor movies were in the 70s-ish. And uh, so, and that kind of uh, goes back to what you're saying in terms of they're kind of the, the least well-received movies. So I think this is just going to continue that. Okay. Sonya Mansfield. I'm going to say it's going to be the best Thor movie and go 80. 80. All right. Now, for those of you listening at home, you might expect me to say 76 (laughs) because I'm a weasel. (laughs) But I'm going to go, I'm going to, I think this is going to be the best reviewed one yet. I'm going to go 82. (laughs) I think it's going to be better. I don't think it's going to be like in the 90s. I, I don't think it's going to be like a revelation to people. I think it's just going to be a fun, good movie. It's going to be the best review to the Thor movie. So, yeah. It, it will definitely, judging by my score, it will definitely be somewhere between 102 and 62. <laughs> so that's where I'm putting it because I'm usually 20 off. So, uh <laughs> 82 is what I am predicting. Okay. That brings us to our next movie. Edgar Wright's movie that he's doing. Has has Edgar Wright done a movie since he walked away from Ant-Man? Speaking of Marvel? I don't think so. That... I think the lot... What's the lot... Did he direct that movie, Paul? Uh, I don't think he did. That thumping that you're hearing in the background is our crack research staff here at working out about trailers, <laughs> researching uh, Edgar Wright's last movie. For those of you playing at home, it's the World's End. The World's End. He also directed Hot Fuzz. If I, correct me if I'm wrong. And also uh, a zombie movie that's escaping me. Oh, he also did uh, Shaun of the Dead. Scott Pilgrim. Right. And Shaun of the Dead. And Shaun of the Dead. That's what I was thinking. So, apparently I'm not that much of a nerd because I don't have Edgar Wright's filmography committed to memory. I am a sham. All right. According to to IMDb, his last movie was The World's End that he directed. Got it. All right. Cool. All right. So, now we are watching the official international trailer for Baby Driver. So that's Baby, Baby Driver, the surprising same-year sequel to Alec Baldwin's animated film, (laughs) Baby Boss, Boss Baby, Boss Baby. That doesn't even make sense, Boss Baby. Ah, anyway. Sony Man. This is the live-action version. This is a (laughs) live, exactly, it's a (laughs) live-action, rated-R sequel to an animated PG movie. (laughs) It's shocking, I know. Perhaps I'm making it up on the I think this movie spot. looks better than Boss Baby. I'm going to go out on a limb <laughs> and say that it's better than Boss Baby. Are you <laughs> sure you want to say that Edgar Wright can make a better movie than Boss Baby? Do you are you realize what that might do to your reputation as a yeah, film aficionado, Sony Mansfield? Oh, I am a gambler. <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, so what do you think? I think this movie looks really fun and entertaining. I'm a fan of Edgar Wright. I like all, I like Shaun of the dead and the world's end. And I love, I love Scott Pilgrim versus the world, which Peter super hates. (laughs) He thinks it's one of the worst movies ever. I think it's one of like the best movies to come out in a while. Like when did that movie come out? Let's look it up. When did it come out? All right. Hold on. It's one of my favorite movies that year. Scott Pilgrim. Why don't you look that up? But first, I got a question. I'm looking for... it up right now. 2010. I it gotta... was my favorite movie that year. Peter, what do you have against Scott Pilgrim? I understand not liking it. In a in a Wes Anderson, he's too uh, 
happy on himself kind of way, <laughs> but hate it? You know, we've already been through this, right? No, no, I don't. I Maybe we have. Maybe I'm completely forgetting it. Actually, we had no. a whole discussion about this, I think, on the Pop Show podcast at one point. Okay, well, now we're going to have it again. Why do you hate <laughs> this movie? <laughs> Uh, let's see. It's it's annoying. It thinks it's smarter than it should be. Uh, it's a whole Wrong. bunch of... Wrong. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Donald. Um... Sad. Unfair. <laughs> Bad or sick guy. All right. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I just... I, everything about it just rubbed me the wrong way. I don't... I didn't like the way... The, the, the plot was, I thought it was just too hipster. You know, uh, I dislike Michael Sierra with a, with a passion to begin with. So that, that's that's something. Going well, on. if you yeah. don't like him, then yeah, that's that's tough. That's going to be a big deal. All right. So what uh, do you think? Having Ramona's said all that, a terrible character. Okay. okay. Uh, I got terrible, it. terrible, terrible no, character. So is uh, so no, is the, I hear you. Uh, no, knives. I, I sorry, knives I started is this. A terrible character. I apologize. It's my mistake. Uh, having said all that, then, how do you, because a lot of, a lot of, especially as a lot of genre lovers, they just, Edgar Wright is the bee's knees, he's, uh, you know what, gosh, now that you're putting it this way, he's like the, uh, Wes Anderson of nerd movies. If you like Mm -hmm. his little quirks and ticks, great, but if you don't like him, woe be unto you. I am not Hmm? Now, now here's the thing, is that I, I like... I, I really enjoyed Shaun of the Dead. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed Hot Fuzz. Okay. Uh, the World's End's okay. It's not it's not, the, not his best work, but it, but it's okay. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm not against him. I just dislike Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Um, so so Boss uh, Baby or uh, <laughs> Boss Baby. Well, Boss Baby or what is this one called? Bo- <laughs> boss Baby Driver. <laughs> baby Driver. <laughs> Baby Driver. I almost said Boss Baby 2 this time. I was like, Baby Driver. <laughs> baby Baby. It doesn't baby. look that bad. It's a little flashy. The trailer's kind of like a music video flashy kind of thing, which always kind of bugs me a little bit. I don't think it ever, you know, you don't need to have so many cut scenes in such a quick amount of time, but that's just my personal preference, and I'm probably old by saying that. Um, but um, that's fine. Um Yeah, I, I don't have anything against this movie. I think I think it looks okay. It looks it looks like it could be fun. I think the preview does like show you too much, though. Mm-hmm. I feel like it shows you the whole story arc. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I guilty. think it looks really good. I still want to see it. This looks like a fantastic Ocean's Fourteen. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I I I like it. It looks interesting. It looks fun. But it looks like I have seen this movie a million times. Uh. Somebody that's outside of the law, that's super skillful, wants to hang it up, but their boss slash uh, partner slash frenemy figures out some way to get them to do another job that they don't really want to do, while at the same time the guy's fallen in love and he's got to make a bunch of difficult decisions while the bad guys threaten his girlfriend. So I am suspecting that I'm going to like this movie, but... Only so much, because it, it this really does seem like a very well-done version of a story. One of the most told stories in movies. The uh, criminal who wants to get away, but they can't, because all their criminal buddies are screwing with them. So, uh, yeah, Sony Mansfield, what is your score for uh, Baby Driver? I'm going to say 90. 90. Wow. Oh. Peter Brown, what is your score for Baby Driver? Uh, I'm going to go with 82. 82. You know what's interesting? Here's what's interesting. Is... And what's your score for Boss Baby? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's 56 because I think that's exactly what the score is. Uh, uh, anyway. is I wonder if your... If... Edgar Wright is throwing you off here because usually critics just love, love, love his stuff, but you have, he might be a blind spot for you. So maybe you're going too low. 
So mm. uh, well, we'll see. Could be. We'll see. That's true. We will see. Uh, Who has the best score among the three of us? Uh, it will be me, which is eighty-seven. <laughs> it will be Chris when he redoes how he tallies the score. <laughs> Actually, you know what I should do? You know what I should do is I should deep in the night I should get onto our Google Docs where we pay attention to all this stuff and I should just renumber all of the different documents. I'll just wipe the slate clean. You guys will have no idea. You you'll have you'll have to go back and listen to all the episodes, which I know you won't no, do. No, that's get... the worst thing ever. That's right. <laughs> that is going to be my plan. So, uh, am I right, listeners? It's terrible. <laughs> that's right. Don't with, make me listen to my own podcast. God damn it. With that being said, we are on to Atomic Blonde, starring Charlize Theron. So that is the preview to John Wick 3, Now He's a Girl. <laughs> Woman, I'm sorry. Uh, Sony Mansfield. Yes. Did you watch the preview? Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, I think it looks really fun and violent. I, as someone who hasn't seen John Wick, I'll have to take your word for it that it's got a John Wick comparison, but... I think it looks really cool. And I, I, as someone who's worn heels that high, they really could be a weapon. <laughs> oh, they definitely could. One of those spiky heels? Oh, I'm sure they could. Not that I've ever worn one. Yeah, but... I kind of cringed when I saw that part. I was kind of like, oh, yeah, that's going to leave a mark. Well, yeah, I mean, do, aren't there certain floors? I think uh, like uh, basketball floors. Uh, basketball court floors, you're not allowed to wear high heels on them because they concentrate so much pressure in that one little spot that you can actually dent wood with them just walking yeah. across. So anyway, that's your physics moment from the dorking out about trailers <laughs> show. Uh, yeah. Peter. So what, this what, is the guy yeah. who's directing Deadpool 2. Oh, all right. There could right? be. Yeah, interesting. Could be. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. I think so. Um, yeah. What, what do you... Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Charlie Theron, uh, James to, McAvoy. You know, you see a movie yeah. like this and you realize how much the fate of the Furious wasted Charlie Theron in that movie. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's spectacular. What a weird movie. I, I just... I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. Sonia and I reviewed fate of the furious on the last episode of uh the dorking out show and since then i have listened to uh f this movie on fate of the furious and i think the collider movie podcast and man th it's a weirder and weirder movie i am glad to say that uh the two parts that i liked everybody seems to like and Vin Diesel is really warping that movie. Yes, so sorry. <laughs> this is this has been a mini mini review of Fate of the Furious, which is a weirder <laughs> and weirder movie the more I think about it and the more people I listen talk about it. It's just it's it's a franchise that is ripping itself apart uh, while making literally billions of dollars. So oh, yes. um, so it's just going back down 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 the the the, the, the tree, right? Because it climbed up the tree to become actually one of the uh, a good franchise that was enjoyable. Now it's coming back down. Well, <laughs> it, it it became a franchise that was seen enjoyable. I have the other one, so I can't say that. Yeah. But I didn't like this one. All right, but now back to our regularly scheduled podcast, right. Atomic right. Blonde. There is a reason that. Uh, Atomic Blonde looks like John Wick 3 because, yes, it was directed by David Leach, uh, Deadpool 2, also right. jo John Wick. So uh, yep. if you said that earlier, Peter, I'm sorry I wasn't listening. No, um, no, no, no. Um, he also did the recent uh, short that was shown, uh, the Deadpool short. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Where he was in the phone booth and he was changing and all that stuff. So he, so he directed that as well. All right, well... Cool. So, so yeah, so that actually gives me high hopes for this movie. Actually, and it looked like it looks good. Even no, I didn't even know that until Sonia said it. So actually, that even gives me even higher hopes for a movie. I, I you kind of said it was John Wick. I kind of 
think it's more maybe a Jason Bourne-ish, just because it kind of involves spies, and John Wick is more of an assassin, I guess, but it seemed like she was kind of more of a spy, but... Yeah. Um, I like the idea of a female John Wick or Jason Bourne, so it doesn't doesn't bother me either way. Um, although, you know, again, here's another film where we've seen kind of the plot lines have done, been done many times in the past. You know, they're on the run, having to find out who who the mole is inside that betrayed them, and it's killing of all of their agents. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, um, but you know, I'm a big Sir Lee Theron fan, and especially after Mad Max Fury Road. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about it too, but I do have to. The John Wick thing does bug me a little bit in that those movies are about somebody that is so hyper competent that it's almost not fun to watch the action action scenes. Like they're they're very well choreographed, very well staged, but it's it's just they're too skilled. There's almost no threat because the good guy is so over the overmatched or the bad guys are so overmatched by the competence of the good guy that it's doesn't really feel like it doesn't really feel not a fair fight. Yeah. It's not a fair fight. It doesn't feel like an action scene so much as a very precise massacre. <laughs> um, and we'll I think see, you might be actually in the minority there about like how it's not entertaining, but uh, well, I think it, it is... it's somewhat of entertaining, but not as much as it, <laughs> You know, not as I, I think not as much as it could be, but keep going. Anyway, no, no, it's fine. Go ahead. And haven't we already seen the Jason Bourne remade as a woman with the salt, or with Angelina Jolie and salt? Wasn't that the whole point? Is she she is essentially a female Jason Bourne? Hmm. I don't even remember that movie. That's right. Neither when did that does come out? People. Pardon us while we research the internet. About, yeah, so, I guess I guess it, I guess it was. I guess you're right because it did uh, did come out after Jason Bourne. So so um, uh, where do we? I will say one thing. This is the last thing I want to say about Atomic Blonde. Um, it has the best name of any movie <laughs> this year. That <laughs> name is Holy Smokes, fantastic. But anyway. Uh, yeah, so it's Do you done... think they came up with the name first and they're like, oh man, we need to write a movie? Well, you know what? I, looking into it, uh, it there was a graphic novel series, uh, The Coldest City, that this is based on. Um, and I, I, I strongly suspect that the uh, writer of the graphic novel came up with the name and said, holy smokes, I gotta write something because that's a fantastic name. Yeah. <laughs> Just a suspicion. Um... Sony Mansfield, Charlize Theron. What? Uh, I'm gonna say seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. Peter Brown. I'm gonna go with uh, eighty-four. Eighty-four. I am gonna be without honor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be. When you say like like that's that's like a, a shock. <laughs> it's, I, I part of me is wondering how well how well this strategy is. We're gonna have to wait until Star Wars comes out. You know what? Out. I think I think maybe <laughs> for our next movie, maybe Smith needs to go first. No, no, no. We're not doing idea. that. Eighty-two. I think that's a great idea. Eighty-two. <laughs> the Actually, you know what? No, I, difference is eighty-one. I'm going with eighty-one. All right. This one coming up next, The Bad Batch, is a preview that Peter wanted to watch. Let's take a look. All right. That was The Bad Batch. Sony Mansfield, what are your thoughts on this movie I have never heard of until one hour ago? (laughs) I don't understand what I just saw. (laughs) Agreed. I don't get it at all. But I like that we watched a trailer where, like, I don't understand what the story is. I can't tell you really what it's about. That seems like a really good way to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That movie looks like a trip. I don't know if that's something I'll want to see or not. I can't decide. Like, part of me is, like, intrigued and thinks... 
that looks really different and awesome. And another part <laughs> makes me think that's not for me. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I agree. Exactly. <laughs> I have not much else to say because you've kind of summed it up really well. Um, I don't have a clue as to what this movie is about. Is it revenge thriller? Is it just a mind trip? Is it some post-apocalyptic uh, world? Uh, you know, I I don't yeah, is know. Is it all like Mad Max like? Yeah, because you at know. some point they're in the desert, and but then there are also nightclubs there, <laughs> right. and and the, some lavish mansion. So, what exactly is happening here? So I, I don't know. And like you said, it it's intriguing, but would I actually go see it? Is a question. I don't know. Smith. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, and it, it's one of those movies where it says, uh, it plays up the director, um, Anna Lily Arampur. Uh, she directed a movie that I did not watch, uh, A Girl Walks Home Alone. At night. At night. Um, she's directed some you know a lot of shorts a documentary and everything i don't have any idea what to make of this so so the one the one liner is a dystopian love story in a texas wasteland set in a community of cannibals <laughs> now i'm even more confused okay so, now, so it's like is that why so that's why she's missing some limbs like people I, I so, people yes. are helping themselves okay yes. I, I have a question did you mean mean to say dystopian, or did you mean to say whatever? So, no. yeah, dystopian. Okay, because I, I didn't, I didn't know if it was a punk, edgy, LGBT. We are reclaiming a horrible word thing. Or... No, that was just me being terrible at pronunciation. Okay. Well, the reason the if reason that's my thing, Peter. Right. <laughs> Back the, off. The reason the reason that that the reason that that syllogism pops to mind is this could be anything this seems like a seriously indie we're really going to go swing for the fences it's a, probably a small movie with a not a huge budget and god only knows what this can make i have no idea what move what what is going on with this movie but i am interested and it seems like one of those movies that you know for all the guff that comic book movies and action movies get in that they're predictable and lazy and do the obvious expected thing. Indie movies do the exact same thing. They just bore you in different ways. Um, <laughs> and I can't tell if this is one of those things that's so, you know, pleased with so itself and edgy and weird, pretentious and whatever. Uh, see my comments on Wes Anderson. Um, or if this is... Like a really different, vivid, vibrant, fantastic movie, which I kind of suspect because it just there's something about it that intrigues me quite a bit. Um, but again, whole, God only knows. So you know what? Sixty. That's my that's my <laughs> score. I'm gonna go first. I'm probably gonna be twenty off. My number is sixty. I think there's a lot. It's it's gonna it's gonna repel a lot of the more mainstream, more timid critics, but then there's going to be a hardcore group that just loves to hold up obscure things, and they're going to love it. That's my prediction. I'm going to Fair say enough. 45. 45. Oh, interesting. 45, huh? I'm, I'm, I was thinking either 50 or 45. Like, critics are going to be super split. Right. All right. But I'm... I went on the lower end, 45. So, so let's see what the actual score is going to be. And Peter, what do you think <laughs> the score is going to be? Uh, I actually I actually agree with both of you. Um, I think that critics definitely will be split. Half of them won't understand what the hell is going on like, like us, and uh, the other half will be like, oh, it's the most artistic thing I've ever seen. So, actually, okay, stop uh, right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. I'm going to start a new game for Sonya and me on this podcast. Where we try to predict Peter's prediction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm predicting you're gonna pick 53. Sonia, what do you predict he's gonna say? 
I thought he was going to go 50. All right. Ah, Peter Chris Burton. wins. 52. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Finally, I win at something. Hey, you got to win. You got a W. All right. That brings us to another movie that we are going to talk about. Ryan Reynolds, Samuel L. Jackson, in another movie with car chases and explosions and shooting. The Hitman's Bodyguard. Well, that's a movie. That's something. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, so, seriously, about halfway through that trailer, I started like looking at things and like couldn't wait to <laughs> click out of it. I was like, yeah. what a POS yes. that movie is going to be. But so it's so interesting. We go from a movie where the three of us have absolutely no clue what the movie's gonna be like at all. It's it looks interesting, we're intrigued by it. And the trailer's interesting, and, but we just kind of have n- no no kind of idea like what it's going to be. Then to this movie where you know exactly what this movie's going to be like. You know exactly the kind of stupid humor it's going to have and the action and whatever else. And there's nothing nothing worthwhile and it's not like, intriguing seri- at all. Seriously, did this movie get made in 1994 and they're just now releasing it? That's what I was thinking. That's I, what it looked like. I was actually, because I've seen the poster for this and the poster is a ripoff of the 1990s movie uh the bodyguard with kevin costner right. and whitney houston where she sang this song yeah um so this movie seems like i i kind of like where the camp the media campaign is the marketing campaign is it, i think it's really funny but who so who younger than 35 even remembers that movie when it came out or the references that this preview and the ad campaign for this movie are making to that movie? It's, yeah, I, I it tickled me a little bit. I always like to see Ryan Reynolds being funny and his wise-ass thing, but God knows he has been the most delightful thing in a lot of awful, awful movies. This movie looks so terrible. Yeah, this mm. movie. It looks really, really terrible. <laughs> yeah. Like chips bad. It's ripped part two. <laughs> yeah. Which uh, also had Ryan Reynolds in it. That's right. That's why. Yeah. That's the only. Re- that's the only connection there is. Is that this that is like in. Green Lantern yeah. bad, which also <laughs> had Ryan Reynolds in it. <laughs> well, I just realized that uh, I'm just reading through the little synopsis here, and Gary Oldman is in this movie. As a merciless East European dictator. And let me tell you, whenever Brother. whenever the bad guy is some Eastern European fill-in-the-blank, that's, that's really not good. Really, really, that is kind of the most lazy, most obvious, most expected right. generic, generic action movie bad guy. And that kind of generic thinking usually speeds, you know, laces through the rest of the thought process with the movie so we will see uh yeah this i I suspect this is one of those movies even even though you guys didn't like the trailer at all i suspect this is one of those movies that's an awful movie that cuts together an okay trailer i guess i liked it the most however however i do not have any hopes for this movie um (laughs) So I'm going to go first because I'm tired of taking crap from you two. <laughs> oh, and, and also Samuel L. Jackson is basically just playing every other character he's ever done, right? Right. Yes. Pretty much. Yes. And and Ryan Reynolds is playing every other character he's he's done. So, he's a, yeah. out, no. outside of Deadpool. Yes. Yes. No. This is this is as expected. Now, the idea of a bodyguard for a hitman, I think, is kind of funny. Or weird or strange. So maybe this could be... This is the only thing I'm going to say in favor of this movie. This could be one of those movies that's actually smart and clever, but the marketing people just cut together a generic... Oh, that's it. so adorable that you might think that. But, well, I'm not, I'm not saying I necessarily think that. I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility. Uh, but I, I doubt it. The thing about Ryan Reynolds, and we all love him from Deadpool, is he is not a good choice of scripts no he's 
not very good at it he at is, all. He's he he is the best. He is almost always the best thing to watch in the movies that he's in. But that is not a ringing endorsement. Uh, I'm gonna say forty. Oh my God, you're being way too kind. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm going to be embarrassed by thinking low and then finding out that it's even lower than I'm thinking and that you guys still beat me at this stupid Rotten Tomatoes game. But having said that, that you Sonya came Mansfield, up with. <laughs> I don't remember that that way at all. Sonya Mansfield. What? I'm going to say 15. Oh, snap. 15. That's bold. All right. 15. Peter Brown. Uh, Peter. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Now, now, who's splitting the difference? <laughs> All right. Which brings us. Speaking of things that don't look good. Tom Cruise, relaunching the Mummy series. As the first movie in Universal's connected monster universe that fans have been clamoring for since the 1930s this is the preview <laughs> i will explain that when we come back this is the preview to the mummy all right that movie yeah. also exists peter brown you sound somewhat enthusiastic uh well you know maybe it's because <laughs> maybe it's because we watched the hitman's bodyguard prior prior to this and that now i'm just anxiously awaiting something that at least that looks a little better. And so this this actually looks okay to me. I, I didn't find it to look that bad. I, you sound like you're negative towards it. But actually, I thought it was a pretty decent trailer for the most part. Uh, it looks like it has a lot of action, a lot of CGI, which I'm not necessarily a fan of. But, um, you know, it could it could be okay. That I'm not a, is a fan of Tom Cruise. I think he's... It could be a sta- good movie. Do you think he's what? Sorry. A weirdo, mm-hmm. uh, but I think he usually picks really entertaining movies. I agree. So, I tend to think that this movie might do better than we think. Uh, yeah. I think there's some cool stuff in that preview. Yeah, me too. And wow. I, you know, okay. like you said, I don't, I can't really think of too many Tom Cruise, movie, Cruise movies that have actually been terrible. It, I mean, true. it does look like it has like kind of the lame like CGI mummy. I don't know. The kind of reminds me of like the woman at the end of Suicide Squad. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, meh. Like, I'm not as interested in that. But some of the other stuff look pretty entertaining. It's got swimming skeletons. Come on. That is interesting. I have usually I, I, I find myself on the more enthusiastic side. Let's give these movies a chance kind of thing um even though I, I used to be in my younger days hypercritical of a lot of movies now i'm almost too accepting but with this one i'm kind of shocked that i'm the most negative among us I, this movie looks really mediocre aggressively <laughs> bore uh, bo- you know aggressively mediocre boring it looks it looks like it has like late 90s era special effects which i'm kind of shocked by especially that last title sh- shot the mummy where it pulls out through the letters which we've seen a trillion times um you know each year I, I think one of the things that i'm two things have me worried about this one every couple years a new sci- uh special effects technique comes out that everybody gets really interested in and does to death You know, back in the late 90s, it was bullet time, you know, slowing things down. Then it was, you know, in other years, it's been um, like that burning embers. You know, they've perfected the way to kind of put in burning smoke and embers in the air in a lot of movies. So now a lot of times you'll see kind of smoke and little sparks flying all over. This, you know, in the late 90s, it seemed like sand particles were one of the things. And in this movie, start to finish with flying glass and sand and all this stuff. But it doesn't look any better. It looks as cheap as the stuff of the original Mummy movies. Or, sorry, in the original remake of the Mummy movies. uh, Did. And I thought it was really not good. But here's the Hmm. other thing. 
I agree with you 100% for year, about Tom Cruise. And for years, I've been defending him. It's like, yeah, he's probably a kook outside, and he might even have done some monstrous things. I don't really know. However, the man can pick scripts. He can pick projects that play to his strengths. And his movies are usually either... He's like the opposite of Ryan Reynolds. He is. Yeah. He yeah. is. Um, he either picks stuff that's has a good idea, has a good you know, place to start that maybe it wasn't executed all that great, but was still kind of, okay, good. You know, the, a movie like that I'm thinking of is like, I think it was called Oblivion. Um, but right. this, yeah. but, but, you know, then there was the Jack Reacher a couple years ago. That was a very generic action movie, but I watched Jack Reacher too, because I had nothing better to do. And I like to go to movies with my boys and Jack Reacher 2 was shockingly bad. It was mm. like a it was like one of the more mediocre directors from the A team back in the 80s got to make a Tom Cruise movie in the you know in 2015 or 16 or whatever. It was really awful. Just horrible staging, horrible lighting, horrible action, and Tom Cruise was really bad in it also. I think he might be losing it. Mm. I think he, you know, he he's... I don't know. Like, just a couple years ago, he made that Mission Impossible movie. That was two years ago. He did. No, that's yeah. true. And, and, Mission, and that's and, a good movie. And Well, I think he's I think he's surrounding himself... He, one of the smart things about Tom Cruise is he surrounds himself with really good directors and usually picks good writers, and he works with them to do it. And I've, I've heard him talking he and Chris McQuarrie talking about the last Mission Impossible movie, and they're both working on this Mission Impossible movie. So I think it could be great. But, he, you know, maybe Jack... The, the two Jack Reacher movies that he's done have gotten progressively wor worse, and this one just looks mediocre. This looks like paint-by-the-numbers, generic action blah. The other thing that's going on here is Universal is trying to launch their own connected universe based on all the 1930s and 40s Universal stable of monsters like Dracula, Wolfman, The Mummy, Frankenstein. It's and this... interesting that they would start with The Mummy. Well, yeah, you know, who knows why. Well, <laughs> here's what's funny is I think unofficially they – got this idea in their heads and there was that Dracula Beyond or Dracula Begins movie like two years ago. I don't even know what that is. It, it was the, <laughs> it was the or Dracula Reborn or something. It was just, it was like a year and a half or two years ago. And that was supposed, what, what, what happened is they made that movie. And then in the midst of making that movie, Universal said, we're launching this connected universe series of movies so they put an after credit scene on there to kind of show that they're that that i think that movie takes place all in the 1300s or whatever but the last after after credits took place in modern times and it was to show dracula is now alive in modern times and 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 that was supposed to kind of be the seed unfortunately that movie was really not well liked so, was it called dracula untold I think that's what it was. Yes, um, it came out in 2014. Right. I think I think that might be it. I'll do my own googling here in a second. And but, it, it 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 had a 23 on RT. Right. Here's the thing: is Universal has recently said that movie wasn't good enough to start the thing. The Mummy. <laughs> oh. The mum, The Mummy is the one that's actually supposed to start this, um, but. Yeah. So anyway, that is my little rant on uh, the Mummy. Sony Mansfield, do you have anything else you'd like to say about it? No, I'll just give my score. I I'm gonna split the difference. I'm gonna say fifty. Uh, you're gonna say fifty. Okay, fifty. P All right. Hold on. I am going to. Say 62. I think it's going to do a little bit better 62. than what Sony thinks. Okay. Now that I've pulled up the Internet Movie Database listing for this, uh, I'm reminded of a couple of things. Alex Kurtzman, who co-wrote 
a couple Transformers movies, the first two of the Star Trek rebooted movies. Because um, you would know. He is... Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I would know, I, I would know right. both of those. That's right. Um, he also wrote uh, or worked or produced the Amazing Spider-Man movies, and he also worked on uh, Fringe, I think is what it was. Yeah. Anyway... He's supposed to be the Kevin Feige of this uh, Monsters Connected Universe at Universal. He's directing The Mummy. Um, who knows? I don't know. Who knows? Well, he also produced, uh, also produced uh, Alias. He, Yeah, I think he worked on Alias and produced yeah. Alias. So, so yeah, yeah, he's done some good stuff. Now, the other thing is no, you don't want to lay too much at the f- for the Transformers movies, you don't want to lay too much at the feet of any writer or director, or sorry, writer or actor, because they're all basically just cashing paychecks, and Michael Bay doesn't pay attention to the scripts anyway. Um, but some of his other credits, yeah. Well, you know, I really like the first Star Trek movie. Um, oh, here's good news. He's also one of the producers on Star Trek Discovery. And it looks like he might have written some of the episodes as well. Yes. So he is... Yeah. Oh, so, okay, here's the thing. So he uh, is the producer of Van Helsing. He's the producer and director of... I didn't see Van Helsing. The was, Mummy? Was well, no. Good? This is the new Van Helsing. Oh, oh. Uh, which I think is... Is it Channing Tatum who's supposed to be? Uh, I guess we don't. He also that. has a lot of ties to Michael Bay. He wrote The Island, yeah, and tra- and the original Transformers and the second Transformers, yeah. So he's got a lot of Michael Bay ties, yeah. And he's also uh, supposed to be producer on an untitled Universal monster project for 2019. So that's kind of what's going on with him. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. So, that's the story there. What's uh, your score? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to so say... So, that all leads to... That all leads to... Here's Come on! Now, I know, I know. The problem is... I want to say, like, 45. But it could just be okay. that this is a poorly cut trailer. Um... Which is always a danger. Is it? You know what? Okay, I'm gonna say 45, and you guys watch. Peter's gonna be right. It's gonna be like 47, and I'm gonna be far off again. I don't like the stupid game anyway, but whatever. So, <laughs> <laughs> big baby, Peter Brown. Do you have anything you would like to say regarding Star Wars: The Last Jedi, Thor Ragnarok, Baby Driver, Atomic Blonde? The Bad Batch, Hitman's Bodyguard, or The Mummy? Um, I think the last thing I will say, and I didn't meant to mention this before about the Hitman's Bodyguard, was that <laughs> one of the other things... Kick, <laughs> kick it one more time, time before, it, before we leave. <laughs> one of the other reasons that I disliked it was that it had the preview to a preview in it. Oh, and yes! I meant to say this when I, when I was, when I was uh, talking about it, but I forgot. Uh, just to continue my anti preview and preview rant that I continue on this show. So I'm just going to leave it at that. It I agree with Peter mystery. on that. I second that emotion. I am not a fan of the preview of the preview. It makes no sense. They especially, need to stop. Especially in that one because it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes no sense. It, God, it makes no sense. Anyway, if you're wondering what we're talking about, we're going to have a link to the Hitman's Bodyguard that. Uh, preview that we watched and you'll see what we mean and i believe correct me if i'm wrong guys didn't we discuss this last time i think we did there is a reason i don't remember what the reason is and i'm not going to research it now so i could say it here i'm going to make you go back and listen to the last episode of dorking out about trailers so (laughs) sony mansfield do you have anything else you would like to say about these movies no i think i'm good goodbye goodbye Bye.
dorking out about trailers can be found on Twitter at Dorking Out Show, where you can also find Chris at Jet Jurgens, Sonia at The Sonia Show, and Peter Brown at Peter Brown AX. You can read about Sonia's random adventures at thesoniashow.com. You can keep track of the progress of my novel, Jet Jurgens and the Infinity Key, at jetjurgens.com. You can also sign up for the mailing list to get free chapters, early chapters, beta reading material, and basically just the book. So go there. You can also find out all about our other show, Dorking Out, at dorkingoutshow.com. While you're over there, you can support us by giving us a review on iTunes. We have a handy-dandy link to take you over to iTunes where you can leave your five-star rating and your review in iTunes, which helps us get more listeners. We do it for your podcast. This has been a presentation of Rocket Spots Media.